YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and behind me are the fish tanks that I have in my greenhouse. I've gotten a lot of questions from a lot of viewers uh, just asking what the hell are these things. I've been kind of in the background of a few videos, you know, what am I doing with them, you know, what's the deal with those? Well, that's what the vi video is about today. The, I've got two tanks here, uh, a top one, which is much larger, and a lower one that you can kind of see it cascading down into here. Uh, the top tank is about 600 gallons or so of water. The bottom tank is maybe, I don't know, like 150 gallons, maybe a little more, something like that. And the reason that I built them was just I thought it would be cool. I always had fish when I was younger, and uh, I just thought it'd be really nice to kind of liven up the greenhouse here by having some, some fish ponds. I'm also interested in aquaponics, permaculture, or, you know, closed-loop systems, things of that nature. So I wanted to experiment with that, but the primary reason I built them is I thought it'd be neat. Now, what's in here are just some comet goldfish that I bought for, like, 10 cents each at the pet store. They were, like, that big. Now, the biggest ones are kind of, like, about that big. You know, the bodies may be that, and then with the tail, they're, they're, pretty, they're getting pretty big. The reason that I think that it's applicable to this channel, uh, and uh, aside from just people asking me about it, is that uh, if you're interested in self-sufficiency, aquaponics is uh, a great thing to be experimenting with. And that's kind of what these are, is they're experimental tanks. Uh, goldfish are carp. I've never eaten a carp, and I've heard that carp don't taste very good, but you could kind of raise a lot of different fish in these, or you could try raising a lot of different fish in these and see what sticks and what works and what doesn't work. Uh, so. I'm not eating my carp out of here, but they do have a practical use for the greenhouse. They're not just for, you know, fun and beautifulness and all that. Oh, by the way, uh, these, these metal grates on the top, um, those, those are just to keep my boy from falling in and drowning. My, my mom insisted that I had to install these when she saw these lovely little tanks out, she's, out here. She said, oh, these are so wonderful, but you have to put grates on them because the river's going to drown. So <laughs> uh, they, my, my, uh, my dad was actually nice enough to mill these up for me. He's got a machine shop. And he brought them and he installed them. And they, uh, River's grandparents feel so much uh, safer now that they're on there. So that's what, that's what those are on here for. They're not to keep the fish from escaping. I don't have, like, monster fish in there or anything like that. Um, but I did say that there was a practical use of this, aside from it just being pretty. And uh, that is that it is feeding nutrients into the rest of the greenhouse. I have rain barrels just on the outside of this wall right here. And they overflow into this upper tank here. And when this tank overflows, you can see that it flows through here. I got some mosses and stones in here that act as kind of a filter and a, um, a modulator of the overflow, kind of slow it down and have it come down as more of a drip. I have it dripping down into a little pot here, which further filters the water, and then that goes into the lower tank, and the lower tank uh, overflows out into the uh, greenhouse beds. Now the greenhouse beds, when I initially put the greenhouse together, it's, it's just all subsoil. It's really junky soil. It was just piles of dirt that I had from the excavation of the foundation, uh, and it wasn't really anything that you would want to grow anything in. But with this, uh, this fish water, with algae and fish excrement and everything flowing through the system, it's really livened up the soil, it's given it a lot of nutrients, uh, and my otherwise dead soil is now exploding with life. So uh, aquaponics, even if you don't plan on eating the fish, is a great way of getting nutrients out into, you know, wherever the overflow goes. I also have a way of uh, looping the water through the system where uh, I have a cistern that the lower tank overflows into uh, and that cistern can empty out into a bucket and I just take the bucket and I carry it up over here and pour it into this upper um, compartment and this upper compartment trickles down to the lower compartment and the lower compartment is a uh, a primitive dirt and gravel and char charcoal filter. So the water percolates down through that and then goes into the upper tank again, having been cleaned out. So that's a way of looping the water through the system and uh, not having to rot, rely necessarily on you know, fresh, clean rainwater uh, coming into it. Uh, as you can see, that the, uh, the filter itself is growing a lot of plants just from all the nutrients that's uh, depositing itself uh, into there. So I think that it's a great... Uh, it's a great thing to have to just sort of experiment with. You, you could try having some fish in there that you, uh, uh, you know, plan on eating. Uh, that's not what I'm currently doing. I do eat fish. I'm a, I say all the time on my channel, I'm a vegetarian, but I occasionally eat fish. But I just haven't heard the best thing about carp, so I, I, you know, these are just pretty fish that I like to look at. In terms of the construction of these tanks, nothing particularly special. This is just all reclaimed lumber that I got at some demolition yard. Uh, and it's, it's put together just with the... the and, uh, the ends just kind of overlapping each other, and as I put down each course of wood, which is it's like it's roughs on two by, I don't know, two by fours, roughs on two by fours. Uh, as I put down each course, I would take a, a drill and I was drilling down maybe a couple times, 
through these short ones several times through the long ones, and then I drove seven inch nails down all uh, all over it to, to really hold these things together. If you took an X-ray of this guy, you'd see all these vertical seven inch lines all over it because it's just riddled with seven inch nails to hold it together. Because 600 gallons of water weighs a lot, especially the pressure that's putting all the weight up uh, on the bottom of this tank. It's um, that's a lot of weight, <laughs> so I really wanted to brace the thing out. I, I also have a center beam at the very bottom of the middle that kind of holds those two walls to keep them from uh, splaying out from just the pressure of all that water pushing out. Now the liner that's in here is just a regular pond liner, a rubber pond liner. This is a piece of construction paper, black construction paper, so you don't even have to imagine the, the color being different. That's right, Praxis has gone high budget. Real, real black construction paper. Um, to show you uh, how I folded the, uh, the liners to go in here, because you could take the liners and kind of cut them up and then like re-glue uh, re them as kind of like a box-like shape, but the people at the, the pond place said that you should try to just do it with one solid piece. So the way that I ended up doing it was I sort of folded them together like this, like sort of like you're wrapping a present to get the one the one solid piece to make a whole box shape. And I'll just I'll just do that fold one more time. So you kind of bring these around and fold those little triangles up at the end just like that. And then on the other side. So you're able to get one solid piece to make your box shape and you don't have any seams to glue because there's a lot of pressure down there from all the water and I didn't want any seams really low down where the, the, I was just depending on glue to hold them together. There is a little bit of glue uh, up at the top to, uh, to keep the, all the pieces of the, of the spout together because the spout had a lot of sort of curved pieces to get it around the, the side and everything but there's only about a half an inch of water pressure up there so I'm not really worried about that and it doesn't seem like it's been leaking or anything. Uh, but the glue's held up very well for a couple of years. It gets ice around that top area. That hasn't really given it any kind of a problem. Uh, and uh, I just think it's a really beautiful element to add. It's a great way of experimenting with, you know, would it be possible for you to, uh, you know, to grow fish, to, to possibly eat, to have a self-sustaining uh, supply of protein. Uh, and like I always say, it's good to just experiment with this stuff. Uh, see what works, see what doesn't work. But in the meantime, there's a lovely sound of little dripping waterfalls in here that are, uh, well, I find them delightful. <laughs> so that's it. I hope that answers all of your questions that you, uh, uh, that you might have had about this set, set up here. If you have any other questions, please just put them in the comments below. If I missed anything major, I can do another video about it. Uh, but I think I hit all the main points about what this is, why I built it, how I built it, and why I feel that it's so lovely. So that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.